Aloha, my internet family. Welcome back to Practical Printing. Welcome to another episode of SLA 101. Today, we're going to show you how to take your VAT from this to this. Let's do it. Welcome back. So today we are going to cover cleaning your vat, uh, disposing of the resin and properly cleaning it so that you can get a new color in and get it looking nice and clean like this. The reason this is important is because when you change resins, the colors or the type of pigments used or the resin space materials may or may not be complementary to each other. Uh, there are times when you can just get away with you know, emptying out the old stuff and or running it dry and putting in your new resin. But there's other times when you're going to want to make sure that it is squeaky clean before adding in new resin or before changing out the FEP. So I'm going to show you how to do that today with my method. Now there's a lot of information out there on what chemicals to use and it differs from manufacturer to manufacturer. So when in doubt, follow your manufacturer's recommendations. Just as an example, uh, Prusa for their SL1 does not recommend using isopropyl alcohol, IPA, or any solvents for cleaning their vat. They recommend using just plain soap and water. My solution is a little bit different. What I use is a 50-50 mix in a little uh, squirt bottle here. 50-50 um, mix of isopropyl alcohol and distilled water. And because it's diluted, it still has a little bit of a solvent to help break things down, but not enough to potentially damage or fog up your FEP. I also used regular distilled water to provide a rinse. Um, note I keep saying distilled water. At least where I live, the water has a lot of minerals in it, so it'll tend to spot up on your vat uh, when it's drying. Distilled water will help keep prevent it from spotting up on the FEP film. Uh, and lastly, of course, just some regular IPA. I try to keep that off of the FEP itself, but if on the metal areas you run into any issues, you can use it to clean those. Now. The other items we're going to be using today are most of the items here on this blue mat. This is the resin starter kit by Filament One, and it's very handy to have if you don't already have these, and it's uh, just a great thing to pick up if you're just starting out. I'll have a link in the description below. It includes the, the silicone mat here, which is great because when resin hardens on it, um, you can just, or resin spills on it, I should say, you can just cure it with UV light, flake it off, pop it off, and throw it away. Comes with a plastic scraper, if your printer did not already have one. A silicone funnel, which is easy to clean up also, folds down nice and compact. Comes with a selection of gloves, which I'm not going to be using today. And some paper filters for filtering out your resin, which I'm also not going to be using today and I will explain why. I will be using gloves, mind you, just not the ones in the package there. I've got my own. Um, the paper filters are great if you're going to reuse the resin. In the case of this vat we're going to clean, which is from the Peel Poly Phenom, uh, this has been in there for a very long time. And you can see that the pigment in the resin has started to separate quite a bit. So, we want to just dump this and we're going to start fresh. Now, the other items that we're going to need, again, besides the cleaning solutions and the items from the Filament One kit here, you're also going to need a very soft bristled brush, either a paint brush with natural bristles or even just a natural hair chip brush will work. We'll set this aside. Uh, you can pick those up very cheap at Harbor Freight or your local craft store 
um, the goal there is to get as fine, fine haired brush as you can so that it does not scratch your FEP surface. Okay, so with that said, what I'm going to do first here is, in this case, you can see that the pigment has separated. So I'm going to try to stir this with the plastic scraper to try to get that pigment stirred back into the resin some and get it off the FEP somewhat. That will make it help or easier when we drain it out because the pigments will come out and it's just less of a mess for us to clean up. Uh, I also didn't mention it, but we have paper towels here. And while I'm trying to stir this, I'll show you the other two items. One is just a, a bottle of um, an empty sports bottle or, or soda bottle or something. We're going to use that to uh, dump our cleaning solution into um, after we clean out the vat. And we're going to need something to dump the resin into. Now for that, I like to use just a dollar store sports bottle with the top and then I will blow in a plastic bag into it, um, usually from one of the rolls from the doggy poo poo bags, just the plastic bags, and I'll just blow that inside. What I can do then is after putting the resin into that, I can remove the entire bag, tie it off, and I can leave it in the sun to harden up, and that way it gets nice and easy. Now, that's stirred up enough to hopefully get that out. So I'm going to scrape this off a little bit and I'm going to pull off a paper towel, set that there. I'm going to pull off a second one. I like these blue paper towels that I get at Costco uh, because they are fairly lint free. I'm going to pull up my sleeves. And what we're going to do is take this and just like you would with any other other time we're just going to drain the resin into there now I'm not going to bother filtering it right now uh, because I'm not going to reuse this resin if I was going to try to reuse this resin I would run it through the filter to get any of the chunks out but in this case we're just going to pour it in here and you can see there's some good chunkies in there And then I'm going to use that plastic spatula again to try to get kind of like a squeegee to get as much out as I can. Making as minimal of a mess as I can. Okay. I'm going to set that back aside for now and I'm going to take the paper towel and just try to wipe the edges off so that it doesn't make a mess everywhere. And we're going to go ahead and set that aside for now. And we'll set our vat back down. Now here's where this guy comes into play. What I'm going to do is try to use this starting on the edges. And I'm just going to squeeze enough to try to lift that up and away. I'm going to use a little bit of the pressure from it to try to help break some of that up. And then I'm going to use the paintbrush here to kind of try to break up more of that. And we just want to get everything liquid at this point. get it out of there. We want to try to minimize getting any resin or anything out of the vat. We want to keep it all in. If you need to add more, add some more to keep it going so that it softens up. And this pigment is really a mess on this one. This is what happens when you leave re resin in the vat with a, uh, a pigment like this for a few weeks. It does not look pretty. 
Let's see what that does. Now, instead of dumping this into the resin, I'm going to use this bottle. I use the same funnel. But, and we'll start just pouring this waste out into here. It's okay if it spills on the silicone. We can clean that up later. And you can see that got a little bit better. So what we're going to do now is take our paper towel, wipe out as much as we can. Do a little bit more wiping on that. And you can see this is a really extreme case where it's filthy with those solid pigments. You want to be very careful not to scratch your FEP if you can. And we're going to go ahead and lay that back down. Spray some more in there, just enough to keep it lubricated so it doesn't scratch. Try to scrub it. We want to make sure that you get into the edges so that anything that gets into the cracks around the seams comes out. Any chunkies that build up you want to get out. like so. We'll bring this back over and dump that out of there one more time. And you can see there's still some buildup on there, so I'm going to try to get that one last time. biggest thing is we want to make sure that there's no resin left in there. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect until you're ready to put it back in because, of course, you want to... There we go. That's squeaky clean. Want to make sure that there are no chunks and no pieces of resin left. We'll set that aside again. And we're getting pretty close there. If you can see that now, we are pretty clean. Going to wipe the outside one more time with that. And I'm going to finish up by using some distilled water. Just enough that we to try to neutralize the IPA that was in that mixture. And again, to lubricate it a little bit. We're not worried about solvent at this point. Take one more clean paper towel. Get any more chunkies that are in there out. And Make sure it's clean. Make sure the inside's clean. Then the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that bottle of IPA we had. I'm just going to spray the outside edge, trying to minimize what I get on the FEP. And take the clean section of the paper towel. Just wipe down that outside edge. Puff that inside in case anything's missed. And we're going to, now that this is done, we're going to slide this out of the way. And we're going to set this down here on the clean side, on the clean mat, to let it dry. And we're done. 
Now, before you put this back in your printer um, and fill it back up, you want to make sure any IPA that you used on it or any uh, water, soap, anything else dries completely. You don't, do not want that mixing with the resin. We're going to clean up this mess later. You don't need to see that. We'll cap off the bottles, though, so that they don't get knocked over. Again, this will just get tied up, set outside in the UV to finish curing, and then it can just grow in the rubbish in the recycle bin. This is ready to go. You now have a vat ready to either replace the FEP or change your resin types and pop it back in the printer. Uh, again, before you do pop it in, you want to take a lint-free cloth, wipe it down, make sure that there's no dust or hairs or anything dry that is collected on it um, before inserting it into the printer. Make sure that you've wiped the top of the LCD in your printer off to make sure there's no dust there and everything is clean. All right, that does it for today's episode. I am going to go clean up my mess now, and we will see you next time on Practical Printing. Remember to ring that bell, like, and subscribe so you'll get notified when new videos are coming out. If you were interested in the Filament One Starter Pack because you're just getting started off, again, there will be a link in the description down below. And we'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.